Hey everybody, welcome to Wood Chat for September 5th, 2012. I'm Matt Gradwell from Uppercut Woodworks. You can find me at uppercutwoodworks.com on the web uh, or on Twitter at uh, Uppercut Wood. Um, with me here is my buddy Chris. Hello, you can find me online at uh, flarewoodworks.com and on Twitter at flarewoodworks. And you can find me and Matt anywhere else in the social media world world, Facebook, G+, um, make sure you circle us on G+, at uh, WoodChat. That's right, so there's a... Uh, so I see Dale's here now. Oh, good, Dale's here, good. We're going to be doing a design jam with Dale in a second. So there's a WoodChat Google Plus page. The best way to get the link for that is on uppercutwoodworks.com slash WoodChat. Um, the transcripts are stored up there, and all the videos of the previous WoodChats are on YouTube. Um, you can find those links um, in my YouTube channel. The link should be on uppercutwoodworks.com slash woodchat. If you're watching the video but you want to jump into the chat, um, the best way to do that is on uppercutwoodworks.com slash woodchat slash chatroom. Log in with your Twitter, Twitter handle and Chris and I monitor the Twitter feed um, and make sure that your questions make it into the video. Um, and if you're on the text chat, um, then I'll be giving you instructions on how to watch the video, which you can't see right now because you're not watching the video. So, um, so Chris, you want to get started here with Dale's pictures and doing sure. some sharing there? Right. We're going to do design jam again. Um, we didn't get to Dale's project last week, so we're going to start with his project this week. And he submitted a bench we built. Let's start with the overall picture here. Um, maybe Dale can walk us through. Tell us a little bit about the bench here. Well, Dale's not in the video, so... Uh, he's without a webcam, so uh, I'll be I'll be his speaker piece, I guess. He can dictate to me. <laughs> Any questions that you have for Dale about the design of the bench, you can enter them into the Twitter feed uh, with hashtag woodchat. Let's see if I can go full screen here. Okay, so the bench you're looking at here is a uh, cherry. It's got wenge butterflies and it's got copper details between the legs here. I like the contrast. David's asking uh, how the pipes are attached to the legs, the copper pipes in here. And I'll let you know what Dale replies with. <laughs> Foxhole joinery for the legs, yeah, Bl blind holes. So you can see he's got a nice uh, slab of cherry here, like a crotch that's joined in the middle here. And he's got butterflies reinforcing the cracks here. And this is a detail of the butterflies here. I, I really like this detail. Instead of the regular angular uh, dovetail keys here, probably more familiar with seeing. Uh, Dale's gone the ex an extra step. And this is something original that I haven't seen before. And he shaped his butterflies to. Yeah, those are kind of his signature butterflies. butterflies. I think. Yeah, I think they're awesome. Uh, this project, Dale says, is now the grand door prize for a furniture show, which is awesome. Congratulations, Dale. Uh, the copper pipes here are glued in with the epoxy, and the joinery is fox wedge tenons, he says. And I thought Brian was just joking at that. Hmm. Uh, David wants to to know how deep the butterflies are into the surface here. There's another detail view. Look at the figure right along here. That's, that's just incredible. That's a, a very unique piece of cherry and this is a great project to show it off. Chris, do you have any information about how how figure like that is created when the tree grows? Is that because it's a stress point on the tree? Uh, is it the water that soaks in between the two? I, I believe it's due to stresses. I haven't heard about water before. Um, the butterflies there are one inches deep there. That was uh, wow, four the next question. So, Dale, when you cut the mortises 
for the butterflies, what's your procedure? Do you cut the butterflies first and then make the mortises, or do you do it the other way around? And do you taper the butterflies when you insert them? Another question from the chat room. Brian wants to know if uh, there's any epoxy in the top to fill any voids, I'm guessing, or to solidify anything. Oh, in those splits there? And these ones look empty here. And so Dale cuts the butterflies first, no taper. So he would then take his butterfly and trace around it and then cut the mortise. No taper, so that's the straight straight sides on the butterfly, so he has to be very precise with cutting that. So the cracks are left open, no epoxy is added. Um, I'm wondering, Dale, if you use a router and a template to cut the mortises accurately, or whether you do them all by hand individually. <laughs> I see Matt's uh, wondering the same thing. He just asked Dale that on Twitter. Yeah, I'm letting you drive you the conversation. I'm trying to be the Twitter Twitter guy here. Good man. Ha. Huh. So Matt had asked if anyone knows how the figure is created, and uh, the James has the answer. There's little tiny wizards that live in crotchwood. Ah, <laughs> oh, that's a good question. Um, you can see there's live edges on the sides of the bench slab. And Brian wants to know what tool uh, Dale prefers to use to clean up the live edges. So for the mortises, Dale doesn't use templates. He uses uh, just freehand. And wow. We'll have some pictures for you in, in just a minute. So that, that's craftsmanship for you there. Those are precisely cut, right? I mean, oh, they are. You do that by hand. That's a precise cut. Mm -hmm. you, you're not using square chisels on that. You're using carving tools. <laughs> wow. Yeah, that, that's that's out in that that corner. These corners will be the toughest because they're they're rounded there. Yeah. Yeah. And you notice that he's um, are these wenge maybe? Well, they look like they're wenge. Oh. We'll get clarification from. From Dale, but um, if you see the ebony inlays, ebony is actually a little bit easier because it's a solid black color. And if you have any gaps around there, it's easy to fill. When you have a streaky wood like uh, like this here, um, whatever it may be, wenge or zircoli, it's hard to get a hard to fill a void without um, without making it look like fill. Yeah, Brian says it's wenge. He's got. Uh, He's got, I think, three three thousand dollars aboard. Three thousand dollars of Wenge in his shop right now, building some cabinets for someone. So I guess he's familiar with Wenge, <laughs> or he will be in a few weeks. Hmm. You want to go back to the main picture of the bench here? Yeah. Yeah. Brian has a question. That top piece is, is just. Beautiful. Brian has a question about the edge on okay, the, the far end of the picture. Okay, I missed that question. Oh, okay. Basically, he's uh, asking if the edge on the far end of the picture um, is the edge on the far end of the picture cut ninety degrees across, or does he try and replicate the live edge? Oh, that's a good question. If it were me, I'd probably cut a radius, a, a light radius on on the end there. Yeah. Um, yeah, it is hard to tell. I, I only. Yeah, I've I've done it with a with a bevel to kind of simulate the live edge, and I've done a curve. I've also done a, like an S curve. It's hard to tell. I, I only have these three pictures of it of that. Um, interesting on this near end here. I can see one facet here, and then it comes across straight here. So there's two angles here. And then there's a third angle across that far one on the right. So the edges, uh, Dale says, are at 90 degrees. They're uh, perpendicular. And the live edge was cleaned up with a draw knife. So uh, well, Dale's got a different approach. 
Yeah. How, how would you do that, Matt? Have you worked with live edge material like this before? I haven't, but when I've seen it, I've seen people um, do it many different ways. Uh, I've seen people try to keep the bark on and use, yeah. use a very thick um, epoxy-like bar type finish to lock it on. Mm. Even going mm -hmm. so far as where the when the where the bark is loose, they try and epoxy it back on. That's when they want to keep the bark. Um, I've seen yes. people use a um, like a drill with a flap um, to clean off clean out the roughness or any dirt or anything like that, and leave, and leave and whatever bark falls off, they take off, um, and whatever bark stays, yeah. they stays. Um, but I kind of like Dale's approach where he's taken, it looks like the outer layer of bark is there, but that's but everything else is untouched. Or sorry, the outer layer, layer of bark is gone, but everything else is untouched. Uh, he just posted a photo. So here you can see... Um, photo. Yeah, so I think you can see this on my screen here. Um, this is how Dale's um, done the recess for the butterfly. So he's got a, he's got a rotor and a straight bit there. And I'm assuming he's working up to his pencil lines there. Yeah, okay, so he's freehanding with a router. I thought he was freehanding with hand tools, sorry. That's what I, that was what I thought, too. Uh, he's sneaking up on it with a router and then... So... Let's see here. Yeah. I wonder if he sneaks up on it with the router and then finishes with hand tools. Well, Dale, what say you? So it looks like a straight bit there. Um, just a, a standard straight carbide bit. Starts with a quarter inch uh, diameter bit and then he moves to a one eighth inch bit to work uh, into the corners and to get closer to the line, I guess, too. Mm hmm. And uh, Brian's asking if he cuts the wenge after the mortars, and Dale answered earlier that he cuts the the butterfly first, and then he cuts the mortars. Mm -hmm. Yeah, James is saying that uh, turners a lot of times will use CA glue to keep the uh, bark on the live edge. Yeah, and it's also really good at hardening up a piece of a section that's kind of spunky or soft. Yeah. Wow, he wow. usually doesn't have to clean. He's done so many butterflies that he he usually gets them spot on. Yeah. Um, wow. And he must have pretty good visibility through the router base too. I can. I can imagine that's that's a, yeah. That's even good. though it's a even though it's a, a black router base plate. I totally prefer the uh, the clear ones, but it looks like he's using the trim router. Yeah, so. he can see through it, and that's all you need. Uh, it's not too tight around the bit. Yeah. Personally, I'm a fan of spiral bits. So that's that's the only thing I would do differently. I'd have a spiral bit in there. Yeah. Let's go back to the main picture here. What do you guys think of the copper? The copper between the here. I like it. I like the. I like mixing up the materials. Um, metal, wood, glass, stone. Yeah. So I like the copper there. I think it fits too. I mean, I think the the color actually isn't. Um, the, the color actually is complementary. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. I, li I like the look of copper too, especially when it's got a patina. Yeah. Yeah, uh, copper would go very well with walnut. There's sometimes where you wouldn't want it to oxidize and get to that green color, um, so you could probably mm -hmm. lacquer it. If you cleaned it, you could lacquer it yep. to keep it that copper color. Yeah. But cherry and that that green oxidized look, oh. That... Yeah, that would look cool. I like that. Right, that would yeah. look. It would almost be. It would almost look like lichen, right? That lichen color. Mm, not not sure what that is. Uh, lichen, the stuff that grows on the north sides of trees. Um, okay. Yeah. Sure. Of all. 
I'll get you a good big a good picture of like and a good big one. So Dale, are, are all four of these leg segments the same width, or do they vary? Obviously, one end of the slab is much wider than the other slab. And I'm looking at your base, and I'm wondering if you've done anything, if you've made the legs at the narrow end narrower as well. I know I've got Dale busy trying to look up uh, yeah, pictures on, on his Facebook page and I'm asking him questions at the same time. So here's that here's that lichen color. Can you see that, Chris? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 yeah that's exactly. And I'm thinking more of the, um, the paler the paler color. Okay. Right. That. The, the, can you, if you can see my mouse pointer too. Oh, sorry. This to me looks more like the um, the copper oxidation, whereas the color over here doesn't. Right. Okay. Yeah. So it's definitely a natural color. It's definitely complementary. Oh yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So the legs on the bench, uh, the widths vary and they taper as well, says Dale. I hope I'm um, reading your tweets correctly. So he's got notches in here as well, which is an interesting feature, an interesting little uh, design decision that catches the eye. It, on the narrower side where the legs are closer together, it highlights the pipe a little bit better too. They'd be hard to see without that notch. Yeah, I like the bench a lot, Dale. Good work. And a beautiful piece of wood too. Yeah, so I'm wondering kind of where Dale finds these pieces of wood. Good question. Yeah, finding the right piece of wood is for for someone like Dale or myself. It's it really it it sets our work apart. It like what I see Dale and what I, what I see Dale doing is he's taking the piece of wood and that really speaks to him. That's something impressive, something amazing, and he's letting that that piece dictate the design to a degree instead of going to the drawing board and drawing up the piece and then going to the lumber store and finding something that works with the design. He's going the other way around. He's starting with the wood and designing backwards, if you will, or from the wood up. Uh, yeah, and Dale's named his bench too. He's given a name uh, Patience. Uh, let's, he, uh, letting the wood and copper age in color, he says. That, that's a great name because copper, as we've already discussed, will change that, that green color over time and cherry will darken and will become a, a deeper over time as well. So yeah, this, this bench looks great now in five years, ten years, over eight. As it ages, I think it'll look even better. I agree. I, um, I like how the butterflies are placed at angles where um, I mean, obviously, he's trying to do the axis of the butterfly is perpendicular to the split, but yep. it makes it makes the butterflies because they're not at perfectly right angles. It actually helps them appear as butterflies. Yes, yeah. You can see on the top left one here, he's put it very close to perpendicular along this fault line here, uh, but here he's skewed it a little bit, and that that makes it seem more organic. Yeah. And of course, it doesn't it doesn't sacrifice the strength um, in any way in any way. Just being at a slight angle. If you want to be super picky, I guess if you had it per perfectly perpendicular, it'd be a little bit better. But that's to the point of you know, either way, it's plenty strong. David's asking how the wood for the bench was cut. Whether it's cut on a on a bandsaw or a local sawmill. I think we'd all like to know, Dale, um, more about your wood supplier. How how you get your wood, what process you have to find your wood, how much you're involved in getting the wood from the tree to the finished product. Yeah, yeah I'm interested in 
Is he, is he sourcing these locally from um, arborists and things, or? He says he's got a sawmill, so. Okay. Yeah. We got another picture of the butterfly depth that he tends to use, which he, he said was one inch for this bench here. Right, here's a good picture. Um, let me just bring Oh, it up. that is a good picture. That is a yeah. very cool picture so because it shows another, how it spans. This is another piece of his. I think this is uh, his table autumn, maybe. Uh, Dale, you can let me know if I'm right or not. I think this is on his header of his blog. Should get a bigger picture here. So it's a low angle shot and not a very big picture, but hopefully you get the idea there. So you guys can see the depth of the of the the butterflies there. These look to be I'd say three quarter to one inch. Probably on the three quarter inch side, I'm guessing. So Dale tends. To, Dale has local tree services that drop off uh, logs to him. Otherwise, he'll buy them from a local mill. Okay. Now I'm wondering, Dale, do you buy? Obviously, if you get the whole log dropped off by the tree service, you get the whole log. When you buy from a local mill, are you buying? Are you picking and choosing the boards, or are you buying a whole flitch, the whole log? When I get my materials, I, I just get a whole. I, I get logs, and then we saw them with a band, so with a chainsaw mill rather. So I end up with a whole log, uh, flitch cut right through. So all the boards are sequentially cut. So I can. I'll have um, seven or eight slabs from the same tree. I uh, usually cut them inch and three quarter to two and a half inches thick, somewhere in that range. Do you have a, a chainsaw? You own a chainsaw mill? Uh, I've got a friend who's got a chainsaw mill. Okay. Yeah, it's it's a lot of it's a lot of work, a lot of maintenance to have and own a chainsaw mill and to run it. So, yeah. it's um, better to have a friend who has one than to have one yourself. Exactly. I'm making furniture. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So he gets uh, the wood free from the tree services, and what's the other half of the message there? Uh, he he says, "I just buy single flitches from from the lumber mill." That's stale. So, how do you buy your wood, Matt? Currently, I um, there's two places in downtown Seattle that are good hardwood suppliers: um, mm -hmm. Compton Lumber and Crosscut Hardwoods. There's a guy in uh, a town near me who um, his neighbor has a tree service, and so he has started to mill and stack. Um, Wood there, but it's it's he's still drying it out. Uh, his name is Ty Allen, um, and so I'm hoping to uh, get some nice air dried stuff from him. Um, yes, yeah. I'm also hoping to um, hook up with the city when they take out trees. Um, and I did recently have a conversation with a guy. It was actually on Sunday, who has a tree service and he turns most of the trees into firewood. And so, Ooh, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm, yeah, so, but we have a lot of pine and fir here, right? Well, actually, a lot of fir. Um, but I'm hoping that when he finds something nice that um, that I can get it. I just need to um, find a place to have it milled. So, mm -hmm. but this Thai guy that is stacking up wood, he might be able to help me out. But I honestly don't want to have a pile of air-dried lumber at my house because that's where my shop is. Mm -hmm. I'd rather just have the tree service guy hook up with this Thai guy, help him find the right wood for me and have him stack it and air dry it at his place. And then, yeah, you know, so. So you're not storing it. You have, you've got all the space and you got the best of both worlds, right? Yeah, I mean, if I was to have a whole bunch of lumber air drying in, you know, stickered tarp type situation in my, at my house, my wife would kill me, so. 
Yeah, yeah. I'd rather have somebody else do that, do that for me. Uh, James commented that uh, he gets a lot of, a lot of his material uh, being a turner, at the side of the road, which is a good source. Uh, lots of, yeah, lots of firewood you can see out there. Yeah. And another source, uh, I saw someone mention it. Uh, Craigslist, you can get, um, you can find lots of trees there. Uh, Joseph mentioned that. Um, you can find lots of. Um, You'll see posts there for trees that have been recently cut, uh, often firewood lengths, um, sometimes in whole trees because people are crazy. Um, I tend to, in my area, I don't seem to see as much good stuff on Craigslist for wood. Uh, mostly it's the, ho the hopers. Yeah. The hokers? The hopers. The guy who's got a, an 8-inch round tree, try, wants to sell it for a hundred bucks or something. Oh. Uh, the guys who don't really know what they're talking about and trying to sell you their garbage. But if I'm sure if you spend enough time there you can you can find the good stuff. Yeah. yeah I think that when we have windstorms here, there's a chance to find lots of wood, but I don't know if it's wood you would want. Yeah, yeah. Uh, tree services, get in touch with your local tree services, that's probably the best way because they're seeing all the trees, they're bringing them down and they're not stone falling either most of the times so mm -hmm. there's not the same risk of damage in the tree. But then stone falling trees you can also you'll also be able to acquire some things you might not be able to get otherwise, some things that, you, that uh, it may not be possible to get a permit to take down that tree. Dale mentioned here that you can get an Alaskan mill set up for about three thousand dollars. So for an Alaskan mill, if you're not familiar with it, it's basically a chainsaw. Um, you'll need a, a big chainsaw because unless you're doing really small stuff, you'll need a big chainsaw. Um, probably a ripping chain. Um, you can get them in varying degrees. You can get a heavy duty ripping chain, which is what my friend uses, and it takes a uh, 0.404 inch kerf, which is a bit over 3.8 of an inch, so a lot of material is taken out. And the trade off there, you are taking, you are wasting more material, but the chain itself is heavier and stronger, so it doesn't, it's much less likely to break. Um, aside from that, there's an Alaskan mill attachment which, which claps onto the bar of the chainsaw, and that guides the saw uh, parallel to the last cut. So you get boards of consistent thicknesses, mm -hmm. and then uh, for the first cut, you'll need a rail, a set of rails as well, something straight to guide your first cut. Wow! So, a single flitch of black walnut from the mill, six hundred dollars. Dale's got a picture of this. This is um, something that Dale's been waving in front of our noses for a little while. For <laughs> I don't know. I've seen pictures of this maybe. Two months ago or so. Nice slab here. Look at that. So that's about eight feet tall, maybe. So this is wood gloat or wood chat? Because Dale has <laughs> got the hookup. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Oh, okay. Is that Shannon I see there? Yeah. You see his, hey. his hand. Hand, okay. So what up, guys? Hey Shannon. I'm here. I think All between I see Dale is Chris's and Shannon. Share, so. Oh, okay. I don't know yeah, how right. I know. Yeah. I think between Dale, Shannon, and myself, we're probably probably three of the biggest wood gloaters around. Oh yeah, I've got my share of wood gloat. Um, <laughs> anyway, I was. Uh, I don't want to interrupt anything. I just popped in. I realized wood chat was going on and I thought this is the perfect opportunity because I have a design question about this beast behind me. I need right. some feedback from a lot of people. So it seems like a good opportunity to do that. Let's do it. Okay. Um, I've, I've got hardware to go over these doors. It's cool uh, Lee Valley arts and crafts hardware. It's going to slide over oh, the yeah. door. Um, uh -huh. 
but obviously this circle is too wide for the style. So I'd always planned on putting another piece of wood behind it that mirrors the circle and kind of wraps around the styles. So, you know, there's an eighth inch reveal between the style and the panel. And the wood was going to kind of flow around that and drop down to be flush with the panel. Um, so I think that'll be kind of cool. And of course, there'll be a slit down the middle for the doors to open. I originally had thought I would use a piece of ebony, really kind of stark contrast. And now I'm thinking that's too much. Now I'm thinking that's just going to look kind of dumb. I agree. Have this like dark circle right in the middle of the door. So then I thought I would try mirroring the uh, African mahogany that I've got on the doors, kind of have that spread across. But now it feels like it's just too much of the same color. Mm. So I'm wondering mm. what people think. You know, should I go really, really understated and have it like blend in using a piece of cherry or something like that, or mm. should I try to make it pop and like take a piece of like really curly quilted veneer <laughs> with that behind it? Mm. Um, I don't know. I could do dark, I could do walnut, and have it pop, is, but not have it look like a big splotch of mud like I think the ebony does. Yeah. When finished, will the cabinet be close to the same size or same color as it is now, or will it be darker? Um, these are going to be, the, the mahogany is going to turn darker uh, once okay. I put the finish on it. But um, these doors, this cherry has browned up nicely, so it's not going to get that much darker. Okay. It might get... These two were not going to, the, the cherry and the mahogany are not going to be such a stark contrast that they are now. I think they're going to come into line a little bit more. They'll be, because the cherry will turn a little bit redder once I put finish on it. And this will turn more of a, a burgundy color. So it's still going to be shades of, of red, which is what has me worried about putting the same mahogany. I mean, this is the, the same piece of mahogany that I did all the doors yeah, and the drawer yeah. fronts from. So it's, yeah. a, it's a good color match, but that might be too much of a good thing. Yeah. Fill in. Yeah. Um, okay. The other thought, and this is this is a Chris Wong inspiration. Uh oh. I have this, <laughs> this turning block of Grenadillo that I have it's spoken for. I've got a turning project for it, but it's a five inch square block. I don't need all five inches. I only need a four by four block to do it. So I've got this cool line of sapwood here. It shows mm -hmm. up better on this face, and that's our bestie. Yeah. Got this cool line of sapwood. I could saw off an inch. Actually, I could saw off two half-inch slabs of this and book match it so that uh, <laughs> got this look. Yeah. So the cool. sapwood shows up inside here, but I've got this dark red grenadillo on the outside, and it would be a, a circle look. So, you know, I don't know if that's. I'm always hesitant to use more than two woods, two species. Because I think it starts to get a little cluttered and crowded. Um, but I think, it's like a resume that has ten fonts. Yes, exactly, right. exactly. And that's my worry with this ebony is it would be kind of a cool contrast. Yeah. Um, but that's why I think green and green only uses tiny ebony plugs because it's a cool contrast. They don't use monstrous plugs. And this would be, you know, like a six-inch circle. Yeah, a six-inch circle of ebony, and I just think that would look like a yeah. giant tick. On the front of the case, I don't. Yeah. I don't know whether I. I want to do that. Plus, Canon. What's that? Are you Are you wed to that hardware? No. <laughs> Matt's in the same boat as I am. <laughs> Buy new hardware. <laughs> I, yeah. I I think the proportion of the hardware to the size of the door. Yeah. Um. To me, it's just big. Too big. I think. Can you can you give us a close-up of the hardware, Shannon? Yeah, okay. Better? Yeah. And the styles are about uh, two-thirds as wide as... Uh, yeah. A little, a little more than two-thirds. Yeah. Um, and this, this has a... Uh, there's a post that comes out here and a a piece that slides between them to lock them shut. Yeah. I have it right here somewhere. I, I really, I mean, I bought this like three or four years ago. Uh -huh. I think it would make a really cool statement on a hanging cabinet. And 
At first, I thought I wasn't going to use it for this, and now the more I look at it, I think it would be kind of, I don't know, a statement. <laughs> but <laughs> is it going to be too much of a statement? See, this little thing yeah. comes into the slides across the posts. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, I believe you can get the same hardware without the back plate. That might, or maybe even just skip the back plate. And just do the drops? Yeah, just, and then the, the latch that goes across. Because that's there. There are little drops, drop pulls like this, mm -hmm. and then there are. These are the the posts that the little thing goes through. So little yeah. silver posts. Ooh, I like that better. Something really mellow. No, that that almost might not be might not have enough of a visual effect. I don't I don't know. Um, yeah, or if I just did that, I think what I'd rather do is a block of wood um, instead of the posts. Yeah. You know, have the key run through, you know, then I could use a block of ebony, you know, and have two ebony posts or whatever, but... Yeah. Mm. Well, you might try a darker piece of hardware. Yeah. Um, yeah. Something to contrast from the wood a little bit more. To me, that hardware is, is too big, too big. Uh, for those doors, and I would expect to see that hardware on a chest where in, um, uh, top and bottom, not... Um, Left and right? Yeah, not left and right. So I would expect them to be like this. Not okay. This, right? Um, I like the hardware. I just don't, I think it's just too big for those doors. And it's probably yeah. one of the reasons I've had it for like four years because I really like it, but I haven't found anything. Yeah, for yeah that'd be a really big uh, style for to fit that on and not overpower it. I think what, what because this has a real Asian flair to it. it it's, yeah. Um, I, I think I could see it on a solid wood door rather than a frame and panel door. Yeah. Uh, think think like a crin off case almost. Yeah. With two solid wood doors, but I don't know. This is probably one of the reasons I haven't used it is I haven't found the right piece. I thought finally I've got a piece that's you know 36 by 36 footprint. It might be big enough. Yeah. But you're right. It's probably too big. Yeah. I, I I like the hardware, but I I I could really see that on a much bigger piece. Yeah, probably a floor to ceiling type deal. Almost. Yeah. And I and I would want the um I would actually want the darker wood so that the hardware stood out. Yeah, and that may be because they're in a really, really big piece, that big piece of ebony in the middle wouldn't look quite so big, you know, right. proportionately. Right. Right. Ah damn. Or on a, big, <laughs> or on a big <laughs> sorry. Or on a big No 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 no, because no. really once I got I'd, I've had it. I've had this at this stage for some time now, and I've been yeah. futzing around with the hardware because yeah. I could totally screw it up with the hardware, or it could look awesome. And yeah. something just is not right. So I needed a kick in the pants to say that's not right. So. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks for nothing. <laughs> I'll probably just go with something shop made now that I think about it. Um, so do you think you'll go with wooden posts and then put a peg through there? I do really like that idea because I can also see I could like this peg has a little hole in it. I can also see like a little tassel hanging off of it. Yeah. So yeah. you don't lose the peg. Very very kung fu type thing. Have like this red tassel hanging off. Yeah. Um, which or or you know something that maybe ties into the door. So you pull it out and it hangs from the door or whatever. Yeah. That could look kind of cool, but it almost would be better if that were made out of wood. Yeah. You know, so, and then I could experiment with some crazy exotics yeah. that I've got floating around here. So here's so my uh, here's my crazy idea for you if you go this route. Okay. So let's say you put two smaller, maybe ebony uh, handles, essentially, and you're going to put the peg through those. You don't have to necessarily do the peg perfectly horizontal. Yeah. Right. You could do the peg at an angle, right? So that when it's in, it actually gravity has it in. Uh, okay. Um, and if you want to go for an Asian feel, um, you could make that peg um, look either like the stick that's used in um, oh Asia, the Asian bun thing. Gosh dang it! Steve Ramsey made these chopsticks. 
Well, yeah, but the <laughs> yeah. chopstick. But he, Steve Ramsey, woodworking for Mere Mortals, did these. Um, they're a curved piece. You do your hair up, and then there's specific pointy sticks. I got. I'm not hair a hairdresser. Sticks. Yeah, you could use chops, but having it at an angle might be interesting. Yeah, you're right. That could throw everything for a loop a little. Yeah. And I've got a piece of Macassar ebony that I could turn a stick out of. Mm -hmm. I've got enough like turning squares and things around here that I could probably come up with something really cool. Yeah. Yeah. Ooh, snake wood. We're yeah. back on wood glow, right? Snake wood. I can yeah, we're back on wood glow now. <laughs> <laughs> snake wood and marble wood. That would look awful. All right, well. People yeah. seem to like the idea of a tassel, um, not only from a design element, but from not losing the peg. Yeah. Yeah. Right? So. Yeah, because that would definitely happen. I would pull the peg out and. It would end up on the floor, and if it's a wooden peg, it would end up on the floor and get sucked into the dust collector. Yeah. Um, even worse, a metal peg gets sucked into the dust collector. Yeah. All right, well, this hardware is going to go back in the shelf where it's been for four years. <laughs> Sorry, bud. <laughs> the worst part is it's expensive, too. I don't remember. I want to yeah. say it's like $35 for this hardware. No, it's not that much. Oh, all right. I don't, I don't think so. I'm just gonna I read. bought it at an earlier time when I was more innocent and much poorer, so it felt yeah. like a lot of money. Right. I'm just going to read a couple of the comments in Twitter here about your project here, Shannon. Um, Dale says, yes, the hardware is too big. Um, <laughs> Brian, about your, your idea to resaw that sapwood, he says, just an excuse to use a power tool, huh, Shannon? Who said anything about resawing it with a power tool? Ah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Although, Brian yeah, also, you're probably right. I probably wouldn't yeah. use my pants off. Yeah. Brian thinks the style should be wider to hold the entire size of the hardware, and I'd agree. Probably as wide and maybe 25%, 30% wider. Yeah. So it doesn't overwhelm it. Um, yeah. Bill suggested using a lighter colored wood. Um, uh, David agreed that the styles need to be wider. Uh, where are we? Yeah, I think I'm going to save this for like a full on Asian piece. Yeah. Do an, do an yeah. Asian tool chest. Yeah, that's what I need is another tool chest. Yeah. Because <laughs> this isn't big enough, apparently. Yeah. Is it, well, I'm, thinking of the, I'm thinking of the short style tool chest, but Asian inspired. Nice. Is that a tool chest? Like, little Tory top to it. Yeah, and, exactly. Yeah. 1950s wings, like on a car. Yes, exactly. And yeah. an iPod dock and a laser level. <laughs> and a magic bullet. Anti-anarchist tool chest. <laughs> yeah. So is that a tool chest you're building, Shannon? I'm sorry? Is that a tool chest you're building? Maybe it is. It is, okay. It is a tool chest. Wow. Sans tools right now. But yeah, it's... Oh. It, uh, wings swing out and... Wow. Old planes and stuff like that, and the sides, and the sides wow. open up, and chisels and stuff inside the door, and this is stacked full of molding planes and joinery planes and router planes, and then of course I've got nine drawers full of tools as well. So it's cool. Wow. There is plenty of storage in here that I don't need another uh, tool cabinet or tool chest for a while. Yeah. Until you buy some more tools. No. <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> Is this a hand tool school project? Yes, yes it is. Yeah. What yes. I need is to save my money on tools from tools and go buy more wood to build a big giant cabinet for this hardware. Yeah. Yeah, I've got a I've got a few big drawers of hardware myself too. Yeah. Yeah. Buy hardware I like and eventually it gets used or maybe not. I'm digging uh, that Brian? angle post. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I like, I like that, that idea. idea. Call that the grad wall post. I like that. <laughs> now, knowing that it's used in the uh, shop, how about something shop inspired, like a, you know, like take it beyond this, but like a pencil. <laughs> yeah, right. James suggested a um, Japanese bamboo ink brush. Ooh, there we go. And then I could pull it out and use it to mark my stuff at the same time. There you go. It yeah. serve multiple functions. Yeah. Or I could just get one of those like Rockler silicone glue brushes and just shove it in there. <laughs> I need to 
blue yeah. eye. Please don't. <laughs> how, about, how about a nail, Shannon? Yeah, just nail the door shut, you mean? <laughs> well, no, no, drop the nail through there. Get, get a... Get a big spike and cut it down. One of those big railroad spikes. spikes. Yeah. yeah. Ooh, a big cut nail actually would kind of be cool. A really large cut. I think I have one of those. Somewhere around here. Yeah, yeah here we go. They're, they're usually a dark, dark gray or black, and that would that would accent the, the cherry and the mahogany nicely. I like that I idea, a, Matt. I have a big, giant cut nail. Mm hmm. See, that looks too small to me. I'd have to get a bigger one. Yeah. Yeah. One yeah. that's longer, at least. The, 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 um, the girth, since we're an adult swim now, the girth of it is good, but the length is not. Uh-huh. Okay, so no railroad spikes. Yeah. Railroad spike would have too much girth. All right. Well, anyway, didn't mean to hijack things here. I just figured, you know, any, where can I find... 40 to 50 assembled woodworkers to tell me that I'm out of my mind, and thank goodness. <laughs> and they told me I was out of my mind because I was about ready yeah. to start cutting and like fitting things over this, and yeah. that would have just been a waste of wood. All right, yeah. Cool. yeah, we're here for you. Um, Brian suggested using that hardware, the semicircular hardware on the outside doors. Just to outside doors? On, your, on, the, on the wings. Like on the wings, yeah. Split them up and... Yeah, except that I'm probably going to end up putting some marquetry on those. Ah, oh, wow. At some point. Jeez. Yeah, yeah. Some, some, like, shop theme type, you know, chisels and saws type marquetry on the outside just ah. to be totally theme appropriate. Cool. So in that case, the nail actually is an even better idea. Uh-huh. Ooh, I had another idea. Uh-oh. So instead of doing them side by side and putting the nail through at an angle... You could have it where when they close, they go like this. Oh. Okay. And the nail goes straight down through the top. Right. Right. The middle. Like a knuckle. Like a like a, a knuckle yeah. joint. Like a yeah. finger joint. A yeah. finger joint. And they come down through. It comes down through the middle. Yeah. That That'd could be a pretty be awesome. bold statement too. What's that? Yeah. That'd be a pretty bold statement too. Yeah. I like that idea. I've had two, at least two, good ideas today. <laughs> come on. <laughs> Damn it, that's going to take some more thought. All right. This thing's never going to get done. Yeah. It I've got will, a question it will for you. and it will be awesome, sir. Yes. All right. <laughs> I've got a question for you, Shannon. Yes, sir. Is there, is there more nice woodwork in your house or in your shop? In my house. In your house? Okay, that's good. Yeah, I mean, in my shop, it's mostly like laminate casework. <laughs> okay. Well, I mean, my benches, those are very nice, but... This is actually the only, I've got a Home Depot pine bookshelf in the back. Um, got some white laminate cases. <laughs> you no, know, it's, it's in the house. Really you know? I don't have walnut tables and, and assorted Windsor chairs and things like that in the shop. So definitely more nice woodwork in the house. Is your sawtail really out of pine? No, my sawtail is white oak. Oh, uh, okay. Or saw white oak. My... Uh, Saw bench is some radiata pine. The top is five quarter radiata pine. The bottom is just whatever was on the rack at Home Depot. Gotcha. So yeah. uh, Joseph says, um, "Don't worry about being insane. We're all a little bit crazy. <laughs> You're in good company." And then James says, um, "If you use the cut nail, you could just embed a rare earth magnet." Right. So you you, you never just destroy it. Yeah, you would never lose the thing. I think you could use. I think you could, if you wanted to use a um, a tassel, you could use like a plumb bob line, hmm. or, or braided leather, braided, braided leather, or something yeah. like that. So, how about a chalk line? I could just hang the square on the front and have the plumb bob hang down. The square would fit into like yeah, you know, yeah. latches. Yeah, there you and go. A couple brackets, oh, and then yeah. the square holds it closed and also yeah. works as there you go. square. There you, go. Hmm. you could do that. Uh, there's a question. People want to know if you finished your chair from Roy's class. Um, I don't have finish on it yet, but um, that's a theme, purposes, Shannon. That's yes. a theme with um, you. I just um, <laughs> the, the last step. Let me grab the bow real quick. Yeah, the the last step was actually to elongate all these holes. 
mm -hmm. so that they're kind of football shaped so that you can wedge them properly. And I just did that. So that's the last thing I have to do before I, you know, I had to take it apart several times to drill blind holes and things like that. But really, once you wedge it, it's together for good. So I'm at the point where I just need to put it all back together with glue, wedge everything, and it'll be ready to uh, be finished. So yeah, everything else is done. Cool. So when it's complete, how long will it take for you to put finish on it? <laughs> um, <laughs> like physically to actually apply it or before I get around to it? <laughs> before you get around to it. Questions. <laughs> before you get around to it. Um, <laughs> probably not too long, actually, because I'd like to get it done before October 1st. Good, that's okay. Next, um, You're April making progress then as a finisher. What was that? You're making progress then, because wasn't there a table you had that uh, right. oh, yeah, well, I got took you a while? I got finished and moved out. Yeah. All right. That's I'm, good. I'm, I'm closing deals around here. I'm making That's all great. kinds of stuff finished. That's great. Now, I, I actually, um, honestly, this chair is extremely comfortable to sit in, so I just want to get it done so that I can sit down. <laughs> Very nice. Yeah. All righty. Well... In case you guys didn't hear, there was just a dog pacing back and forth in here, ready for his nightly walk. So I gotta hit the road. But All right. thank you, Wood Chat. Yeah, thank, thank you for stopping by. I appreciate it. Stay. That was good timing, Shannon. Glad, glad to have you on. All right, we'll see you later, Stop. guys. Right. See, see you, Wood Chat. Bye bye. Bye bye. Well, that brings us to 6.55. So, you got five minutes left. Um, anything you want to cover, Matt? Um, well, yeah, let me pull up a picture of, of what's on my bench these days. Okay. If I can find the darn picture of what's on my bench these days. So, next week we're looking at a regular wood chat. We're just going to have all of us hanging out. No, no particular theme at least planned as of yet. So if you've got pictures of what you're working on, have them ready for next week. I've got a couple things that I'd like to show you next week. One thing at least, anyhow. Hope that we got some good feedback for you, Dale. And thanks for sharing both to Dale and Shannon. I was going to bug Shannon about buying his hardware before he started the build, but he actually bought his hardware years before he started that build, so he's exempt from that tease. So who's the next famous person to join the Hangout? asked Brian. <laughs> Who knows, man? I, we've been trying to get Drew Carey on here for years. <laughs> What's his uh, I'd excuse? Love to see, um, Nick Offerman on here. Right. Yeah. Get yeah him to join. Have you got a list of? Um, you started a list, didn't you? Uh, yeah, I started a list. I'm supposed to put it up as a poll, but I haven't yet. So. Right. Because I'm just so behind. All right. So here's what's on my. Uh, here's what's on my. Bench right now. Um, luckily, I cleaned my bench. Guitar. Guitar? But that is a Telecaster. Um, I have a friend who built a guitar in, um, I guess it was high school. He bought really good electronics, but he was a crappy woodworker. So he had this silver monstrosity of an ugly electric guitar. Mm -hmm. And um, so we're reusing all the electronics. And um, apparently you can download a DXF uh, AutoCAD file for a Telecaster um, on the internet. So he downloaded that, we made a router uh, a router template and routed the recesses, bandsawed the edges, um, cleaned up the edges, um, and rounded over with the and the neck fits the recess perfectly, the hardware fits perfectly. Um, so now we're getting ready to sand, and then we're researching the right finish to use. He really wants to have an authentic 
finish on this, um, and I think it's called um, Golden Blonde or Blonde Gold or something like that. So it's pretty cool. It's, pre it's a pretty fun project. So um, we work on it maybe one night a week for a few hours. So, And when it's done, we will post a video of him um, shredding the music. Cool. So Dale thinks he needs some wooden picks now. Yeah, we probably do. Yeah, and I know Dale makes those. Um, <laughs> I, I should, I'm I'm glad Dale sent that because I actually want to put that on that guy's. I wanted to share that with that guy. So, and I'm doing it now. So that's what's on my yeah. bench, and I did a lot of cleanup this weekend. I uh, I had some unfortunate rust problems and I had to scold my family about where oh, set in the garage um, and what kind of things can be brought into the garage and what things must be left outside so there was some rust cleanup and some general tool cleanup so things happen things happen and you yell at your family and then everything's okay so yeah yeah all right, so um, I'll try and get that poll put up, though. I know that people wanted to – I know Chuck Bender had talked about coming on Woodchat, so we'll try and get him involved. I'll, I'll try and get the poll put up. Um, I think, Chris, you and I had talked about perhaps putting something together for a Woodchat at Woodworking in America Pasadena. That'd be fun. That would be really fun. Um, so hopefully we can get good Internet access in the convention center. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, Bill had really quick asked me um, what we were going to make the neck out of. So back when my buddy built this guitar, he had pre-purchased the neck. Um, and it just comes from a company. It's a, it's a neck. It's got the frets. It's got the finish. It's got the tuning screws, I guess you call them. And there's a, um, I guess you call it a tension or a torsion bar that's already yep. built in. So we just have to mount the neck to the, to the body and we're done, so. Cool. Right on. Well, Chris, what do you think? Should we wrap it up? I think we shall. Shall, should, or is, have. What? <laughs> Good night, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. How about, uh, hey, everybody, thanks for joining Wood Chat, September 5th, 2012. Uh, special thanks to our secret uh, guest that popped in and we crushed his dreams, um, <laughs> Shannon Rogers, Renaissance Woodworker. Um, we'll be back next week, uh, Wednesday, 6 p.m. Pacific, 9 p.m. Eastern, with a regular wood chat. Um, store up your pictures and your questions for the week, and we can bring them into wood chat and get those questions answered. Um, and then I promise I will eventually get this poll posted so that we can pick a question. Yes. All right. That's Good night, everybody. Me. Good night, everybody. Good night, Chris. Good night, Matt. <laughs> See you all next week. <laughs>